feel? <laughs> it's different, you know, it's different. Um, but I'm excited. I've heard nothing but good things about this organization. So, uh, you know, I'm excited to see what comes with it. They have six players on the Madden Plus 90 Club. So there seems to be this like superstar, super team appeal to Baltimore. How much was that a factor when you decided to go there? Um, It was just, I mean, I really didn't think about the players. I mean, I guess I did, but it was, it was more so how the organization was ran. Like, I'm kind of cool with a lot of guys, you know. I think in any locker room, I think the guys are pretty cool for the most part. The locker rooms I've been in, even – uh, with Denver, the guys were super dope. You know what I mean? I think that's just what it is. I think we all have a brotherhood. We kind of understand how it goes. We all for each other. Um, so it was more so about like how they treated the guys in the organization, how the organization treated the guys. And then them just being cool is a plus. So, And I know Odell. I know a couple of the guys. I played with Zyler in college. So oh, yeah. No guys. Yeah. Uh, Melvin, what are you saying about how the charges of the AFC West treated you, that that's so important to you? <laughs> What's, what are you really saying, the subtweeting of that? Oh, man, I ain't subtweeting nothing, man. You know, it's, you know, the charges treated me well. I loved everybody in that building. So, you know, I can't really, you know, knock anybody. I still talk to the equipment managers in there. They were dope. Uh, in Denver, uh, you know, the staff, everybody flip, all those guys, they were dope. You know, it just didn't work out. You know, unfortunately, and then the guys, KC, they were lit too. So they were yeah. good. They were good people. Yeah. So Melvin Gordon, you're the, you're like the person I wanted to talk to about this. <laughs> Let's get into it. You All are right. you are outspoken. You've been through it. The the downs, the ups of this National Football League, the emergency Zoom call. All of that. The the running back problem in the market and the situation. What do you make of it? Uh, well, you know, I'm, I, you know, I hate it. Yeah. I mean, that's just, is what it is. I've been saying that and I took heat for it. And then, you know, some of the guys came out and said it and they look like heroes, but it is what it is. As long as the message get across, I don't really care, you know, who, who's the bad guy or good guy. And, you know, hopefully it changed. I don't know what was said in the zoom call, but, um, you know, in my eyes, it ain't really too much that you can do. Um, about the situation, the only thing we can do is when when it comes to the playoffs, we got to be the one that everyone's looking at. We got to be the one out there making a the difference. We got to be the one carrying the team to the Super Bowl. And then when we get to the Super Bowl, we got to be the ones that's making it happen. I think until we could do that, people are not really going to, you know, view us any differently. And I mean, you have some of the top marquee guys that, that are big players and assets to their team and they're getting no love. And uh, you know, if they can't do it, you know, it'd be hard for anybody else to do it. So, you know, at this point, you know, you just got to go out there and we just got to make it happen. We got a ball. We got to stay healthy. We got a lot of variables and it's hard. You know, you know, the health is part of the game as well. But, you know, we have to find the best way and put ourselves in the best, best position to stay healthy. Um, so they can't use that as an excuse against us. And we just got to go eat, you know, and that's just really what we that's that's all we can do. Would you have if you would you have changed positions like if would you, if you could have done it again? No, right? <laughs> Hell yeah! Well, stop. What hey, could, well, don't downplay your career and what you did in this. Oh, I'm not gonna downplay it, but I, I definitely would. Sw- I definitely would switch my positions for sure. To what? For sure. Uh, I probably go like um, probably play corner or safety. But then you got to yeah. run backwards, Melvin. That's not fun for anybody. No, nah, it is definitely one of the hardest positions, if not the hardest position on the field. But, you know, they get paid good. They take less hits. You know, they don't really, you know, worry about too much. Of, they're not having conversations about not getting paid enough if you're a good enough player. And I think you just get to live out your dream a little bit longer. I think uh, our shelf life is, because of how they look at us, it shortens. So, you know, their dream get to last longer. So it's bigger than the money, too. It's just your opportunity to play a lot longer. You just have an opportunity to play a lot longer and live out your dream a little longer than backs do, so. God, they uh, they got to fix this in the next CBA because this is not yeah. what I hear from you, from any running back, from any kid who wants to play that position. Yeah. Um, God, that does not make, not make me happy. Do you think Josh Jacobs should hold out? Uh... I, I wouldn't I wouldn't hold out. I mean, it's 10 M's. I mean, I held out because I was only getting five and I didn't want to risk getting hurt for five million. And I was in Cali, so 
you know, you're probably getting half of that, but he's in Vegas, no taxes. I mean, I can understand. I can understand Saquon. You know, he's in New York. It's it's, it's big on the taxes. You know, give me a little, give me a couple extra million. I'll go and play. But, um, you know, they changed the rules. Um, you know, if you go pro bowl, you get the ten million or whatever, however it works. But, you know, I I wouldn't do it. You know, if you're gonna hold out, just hold out to like maybe the end of camp. If you don't want to get hurt, come back that week and and get to it. But, um. I definitely wouldn't hold out miss any games because you're not gonna get that ten M's back. And he's in a good place. I mean, it's it's I feel him though, cause it sucks, but they still keep the rights to you next year if you yeah. sit out the whole year. So regardless, it's really it's really a it's really a loss. And I don't think with the running back sitting out, it hasn't been good really for any of us besides Zeke and uh you know, I don't know if the Raiders, I don't know if the owner loves Josh Jacobs like Jerry Jones loves Zeke. I mean, that's a, that was a different bond. You know, how he treats his players, it just is what it is. And, you know, Jerry loves his guys and not saying that they don't love Josh, but, um, you know, I think by this time Zeke was already paid. So, so now you're with the Ravens. You're with the Broncos last year. You had mm-hmm. the Hackett experience. He's back with Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Your Hackett experience, Melvin. Uh, you know, I, I, I think, you know, people take it wrong because my experience with Denver was bad, you know, um, with the hack experience, uh, it was pretty bad, but, um, you know, I, I, I don't know. It was just, just all over. It just was not, it was just, it was just not good, but I don't want to, I don't want people to think that hack was a bad coach. Um, like I said before, it was a lot of great people on the staff. I don't think that they meshed well together. And and it showed, but you know I think Hack was a really good coach, but you know Hack can't coach every position. That's just what it is. You know when we didn't understand something, Hack would come in right away, and boom, within like two seconds, he you know what I mean he'd be able to make it clear for us. But he can't coach the running backs. He's not a running backs coach. He can't coach the receivers and the safeties. He has to just oversee and trust his guys. And you know I think some guys on the staff was really good, and then some guys were. You know, there's just a lot of homies on there, and it just it didn't mess. How often did he talk about Aaron Rodgers? Uh, not 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 often. It's not often. I mean, he made it, maybe had a couple conversations about him, but it wasn't crazy. Um, Russell Wilson's teammate, former teammate KJ Wright, he came out this week on his podcast KJ All Day, and he said this when talking about Russell: "Quote: When you play this game, when you go through this journey, it's all about the brothers. And when it's all said and done, he's got a lot of making up to do." Ooh. Okay, now I've, he's not the first person to have these sort of tones uh, and vibes. Talk to me about Russell Wilson. Is there truth to this? Uh. No, I think it's just, you know, everybody has their own perception of, you know, who a person is. Um, I don't think Russell was a bad teammate. I think he was just, he was just really locked into football. He was really obsessed with winning. And, um, you know, if you didn't kind of have that mindset with being obsessed with football, you would, you would, you would kind of take him wrong. And that's just what it is. Like, you know, some people are just obsessed with the game. They're obsessed with winning. They're obsessed with getting better. And to others that are not obsessed with the game, they might look at it like, well, you're not a good teammate. You're not this, you're not that. You know, everybody had a level of, you know, of, of look and perception of how they feel towards that. But, you know, he 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 listened. When we talked to him, we wanted him to do more. He listened. I tried to get him to play Uno. He he finally did it. So, you know, he, he did it sometimes. He was locked in sometimes. He wanted to be a great teammate, but he wanted to win. And he wanted all of us to get that ring and get to that position. And, you know, he, you know, there's a lot of things that weren't right. And he had to have broad shoulders and take that on. And as a quarterback, that's what you have to do. Yeah. And I think he took on more than he needed to. Um, But it's all good. I think he's going to come out this year and show the world what's up. Now he's got Sean Payton there. Good. I like that. Just play the Uno, Russell. Girl. Like, just play the freaking yeah, right. <laughs> And you have to get back to practice. You just got there. You said you've only met Monken. You got to get in there and, like, develop a rapport with him so he gives you the yeah. rock to score for my fantasy team. Give me quickly before you go your mindset going into this season. Like, you seem very above it. Like, you are v- true veteran vibes coming from you yeah. right now. What's your mindset, Gordon, going into this year? Uh, my mindset is I just want to have fun. I want to win. I want to win. Uh, I'm in the organization to win, 
And, uh, you know, I want to show and prove a lot of people wrong because they, they really got me messed up right now. And I don't know if they think I'm weak or what happened or wh whatever it may be because of last year. But, you know, uh, it's, 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 it's on. He's an authentic running back who I think has a bit of a chip on his shoulder. He's very, um, I don't know if it's self-awareness. I don't know how people feel about him. I know some Denver fans, you know, there were some issues there. It clearly wasn't great. He spoke very highly of everybody uh, there. Kind of took it off of Hackett and said it was sort of just the situation, didn't have the right people. Um, Russell Wilson had to deal with a lot and sort of overcompensate and do things that he shouldn't have had to do. So he had love for him. And I wish Melvin Gordon luck with this super team that they're building uh, with the Ravens. As we all know, running back depth. You, want, you don't want to pay him, but you need him. And you need a lot of them to have a successful season in the NFL. So I wish Melvin Gordon all the best. And I appreciate him coming on the show after this.